Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Sapna. I'm one of the consultants at ARGC. There are a lot of questions from patients about egg freezing, and I thought I'd answer the most common ones. I hope this helps you as a little handy guide. What are our egg freezing success rates? Now, this is a very important question because a lot of women feel that if they've frozen eggs, it guarantees a baby in the future. Unfortunately, that's not the case. There was a report published by the HFEA in 2018 where they reported that a cycle of egg freezing and thawing leads to a possibility of about 17 to 20% chance of success in one cycle in terms of a live birth. There are more and more data coming across globally where the success rates are much higher and possibly similar to fresh eggs and frozen embryos. But in reality, what we do tend to see is that egg freezing and thawing gives lower success rates as compared to embryo freezing or fresh eggs. What are the side effects of egg freezing? Egg freezing is a relatively simple process. However, it can be associated with some serious side effects. Starting from the beginning, sometimes injections will cause a bit of redness and discomfort around the injection site. It can also be associated with a bit of nausea and abdominal discomfort. During the two weeks stimulation, it, depending on the response of the ovaries, a serious condition called ovarian hyperstimulation can sometimes develop, which is associated with a lot of abdominal discomfort, bloating, lots of follicles, high hormone levels, and sometimes fluid in the abdomen and chest. This is very rare and due to careful monitoring, it's quite uncommon. Apart from that, in terms of the follicles, sometimes the follicles can be empty. They may have immature eggs, they may have poor quality eggs, and sometimes the eggs can ovulate before the egg collection leading to no eggs collected. Because the egg collection is a surgical procedure involving passage of a needle from the vagina into the ovary, there is a risk of bleeding, infection, damage to surrounding structures like bladder, bowel. Occasionally following this there can be a twist in the ovary called ovarian torsion, sometimes in the infection in the ovary called abscess. However, these are not common at all. Going forward, when the eggs are frozen, there is a possibility that the eggs do not survive the freezing and thawing, though typically you expect about 70 to 85 percent of eggs to survive the freezing and thawing. They may not fertilize. Sometimes they do not divide and create embryos. Even though the embryos are good quality, of course they may not create a pregnancy. And then there is a possibility in pregnancy of miscarriage, ectopic pregnancy and occasionally multiple pregnancy. But the majority of the time, it's quite a straightforward process. Age. Is egg freezing worth it over the age of 38? Ideally, eggs should be frozen when a woman is young, ideally below the age of 35, where she should have good quality eggs. As we women get older, the number and the quality of eggs goes down because we are born with the cohort of eggs and our eggs are as old as we are. A woman at 38 can freeze eggs, a woman at 40 could freeze eggs, but it will depend on the individual circumstances, egg reserve and really being realistic about the expectations and understanding the limitations and the chances. How many eggs do you need to guarantee a baby? As I was saying earlier, no number of eggs can guarantee a live birth or a healthy baby. It does depend on the quality of the eggs, the age at which they were frozen, and typically 15 to 20 eggs for a woman who's under 35 is a reasonable number to expect a live birth. However, it depends on a lot of factors and no one can accurately uh, define how many eggs are required. What to do about contraceptive intrauterine device, implant and the pill. With regards to the pill, we would have to stop the pill prior to assessing the ovarian reserve. Sometimes in the first cycle or the second cycle after stopping the pill, we may not get an accurate assessment of the hormones, but we'll have to interpret your hormones accordingly. With regards to the intrauterine contraceptive device, whether it's the copper coil or the hormone marina coil, or other hormonal coil. We can leave them in place when we do the assessments and through the treatment, but based on the individual history, this may have to be reviewed. With regards to the implant, the implant will have to be removed prior to the assessments and the treatment cycle to get an accurate assessment of the hormones. How many eggs do we expect to get? 
So this depends very much on the individual woman's egg reserve, her hormones on day 1-2 which include FSH and estradiol, her anti-mullerian hormone or AMH level, the antral follicle count and her age. This together will give us an indication of how many eggs we are expecting to see in a cycle. Who would we recommend to do egg freezing? So egg freezing is good for any woman ideally under the age of 35 who does not know her plans for pregnancy or is not planning a pregnancy currently and doesn't have a partner. People who have medical conditions or if there's a family history of early menopause. Some women where they had some fertility assessments and found out that their anti-mullerian hormone and egg reserve is low. If women are older than 35, up to 38, it is acceptable that there are reasonable success rates. However, it does again depend on the individual person's hormones and egg reserve to make these decisions. How long does the egg freezing process take? So typically, the way it works is that once you put in an application form in our clinic, it takes about four weeks to get an appointment. We do like to monitor your first natural cycle or whenever it is that you decide to monitor your natural cycle. So it's about three weeks monitoring if you have regular cycles, just to check your hormones, your scan, your natural pattern of ovulation. Thereafter, when you decide to start the process and if your hormones are good on day one or two, it takes about two weeks or two and a half weeks till the point where the egg collection is carried out. If I have my eggs frozen, does it deplete my natural store? A lot of women feel that if they have a cycle of egg freezing because we collect hopefully 10, 15, 20 eggs that they are reducing the number of eggs they are left with. But that's really not the case. In every cycle, when we even naturally ovulate, there will be a cohort of eggs that will start growing. Typically one predominates and the others tend to just deteriorate and die off. So in a cycle of egg freezing, when we're giving you injections, we are aiming to make many of this cohort of eggs grow, which would have been lost anyway and hence it does not deplete your egg reserve. How long can we store eggs and do eggs degenerate over time? Currently, eggs can be frozen for 55 years, though you will need to have a conversation with the medical team every 10 years to renew your consents. And no, we do not expect them to degenerate over time. Why is egg freezing less successful than embryo freezing? The eggs are one of the largest cells in the body and they contain a high water content. And when you freeze and thaw eggs, there will be crystal formation which leads to damage to the eggs and hence it's more difficult to freeze and thaw eggs as compared to embryos. Why do we do more freezing cycles than thawing cycles? So a lot of women, depending on their individual circumstances, will freeze depending on what their plans are for their future fertility, career, the presence of a partner and so on. But many of them will go on to get pregnant naturally and their plans to have a baby may change. And hence, a lot of people will freeze to be on the safe side but will not necessarily end up using them. These are the most common questions and answers about egg freezing. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate and leave them in the comments box below and we will aim to get back to you. Thank you so much.